Oh, okay, here we go with the notes. This is uh, pretty much going to be the last uh, assignment here. This is almost like a test review, right? For the trig ratios that we've been learning. And remember, these on the worksheet, it's and even on the assignment, it's, it, it seems like it's asking you for one, but I want you to ignore that because I'm asking you to find what? Find all six. Find all six. So when you check your answers on the assignment, you can check maybe that one. Just make sure that that one's correct. But in reality, you're going to find all six. All six trigonometric functions, right? So we have to, we have to, even if they're asking you for one or two or three, I mean, you can just find all of them at the same time anyways, because you'll have all the information there, right? Sine, cosine, tangent are the first three that we, the first three that you're going to have to find, no matter which one they ask you, find these first, one, two, three. And then once you know the answers for those, well, we learn how to pair them up, right? Pair them up for these new three. For the new three, I start with the tangent, and I know tangent goes with cotangent. Sine cannot be secant. They start with the same letter, so sine pairs up with cosecant and cosine secant right they cannot start with the same letter and pretty much as far as the ratio is concerned they are reciprocal right they call these reciprocal identities all right let's jump into these mainly i picked the more challenging ones the ones with the radicals with the square roots okay so again really nothing that we've that you're going to see here is is anything new really it's just a, a combination of everything that we've learned in the previous assignments right so that's why i said this is kind of like a test review okay test coming up all right so here's where you can pause it copy this oops let me uh, focus this copy the problem down here in your notes and we've seen this before right and what i mean by that is we obviously can see that there is a missing side. There's a missing side, so that's going to be your first. Your first task is to find the, to find the missing side. Okay, so I'm going to do that work on the side over here. Right, so that's going to be. Uh, root 19 and why am I gonna do it on the side well because for this we have to label the triangle right in order to find the missing side for the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus B squared equals C squared I gotta label these sides ABC right so let's go with uh, oh first the C side the C side is this. The oh, and then here A and B doesn't matter. A and B doesn't matter. Remember later when we do later when we do this, this is the hypotenuse side. And then this does matter. This is opposite and this is adjacent. But when you do Pythagorean theorem, the most important side is the C, which is your hypotenuse. And then it doesn't matter which one's A or B. So I'm going to put this one A and I'm going to put this one B. A, B, C. Okay. All right, so here we go. We got A squared, which is the square root of 19 squared, plus B squared, which is B is 9. 9 squared is equal to C squared. I don't know C. That's the one you're trying to find, right? Okay, the square root of 19 squared is the square root of 19 times another square root of 19. Well, we know when we have two of those, it gives me exactly just 19. 19 plus 9 squared is 9 times 9, that's 81. E equals what? C squared. So 81 plus 19 is 100. Oh, great, that's 100. 
I like 100. 100 is a perfect square root number. Now we take the square root of both sides. And you're going to get C is equal to, while the square root of 100 is 10. All right, we found that missing side. You got to make sure that this missing side is correct, okay? All right, so now let's take this information and go back to our problem and finish it to find the, the trig ratios. So this is what? We just found out that this is what? That this is a 10. Let me put it right here, 10. All right, now, now that we have to find these trig ratios, you gotta label these with the, not with the ABC, like the Pythagorean theorem, this is gonna be the, the hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent. So obviously this diagonal one here is my hypotenuse. Look for the angle and opposite of it is your opposite side. And then the last one's your adjacent side. All right, so let's do it. Here we go. I'm gonna use so. I know sine, S is for sine, that's O or H. Ka, C tells me that it's cosine and that's A over H. And Toa. Right, we use Soka Toa to get these first three sine, cosine, tangent. S for sine, C for cosine, T for tangent is O over A. So here it is. Sine is O over H. Cosine is A over H. Tangent is O over A. That's it. So let's put the numbers here. O is the square root of 19 over 10. Cosine is A, 9 over 10. And then tangent is what? O, square root of 19 over 9. Got that. Okay. Always look. Well, we don't have a number here, so there's nothing to reduce, but we always check that. Okay. And... Before we do anything else, let's get the other three, right? Now that I know these three. That is tangent pairs up with cotangent, sine with cosecant, and cosine with secant. So that's a square root of 19 over, oh no, I didn't do the reciprocal. I'm over here writing the copying the same thing that's not right I gotta I gotta do the reciprocal even what's going on uh, that would be 10 over the square root of 19 that would be 10 over 9 and that would be 9 over the square root of 19 Okay, so this is what I was telling you in the previous assignment. In the previous assignment, when you have some that are like this that have radicals, don't fix them yet. Don't fix them yet. Just leave everything what it is. If the whole numbers can reduce, you reduce. Um, now, now there's nothing to reduce, and now is when we gotta look at. Now is when we look at these and say which ones do I need to fix? Well, what do I mean by that? Well. It's okay when the square root is on the top in the numerator. That's okay. So these are okay. That's my final answer there. Oh, these don't have square roots. So those are, those are okay. Those are my final answers there. This one has a square root, but it's in the top. It's okay. Which ones have to be fixed? This. See, this is the one that has to be fixed. You cannot leave these with a square root on the square root in the denominator. So we have to do multiply top and bottom by root 19 and root 19. Why do we do that? Because once I have the two, nine, the two root 19s and when you multiply, they give you the whole number 19. You multiply these two, you get this. And then on the top is just 10 root 19. Okay, fix that one. And next one. 
multiply by the square root of 19, multiply by the square root of 19, and that would be 19, right? These two make a 19 whole number, and that would be 9 root 19. Oh, by the way, I always have to check, again, now that I do have some whole numbers here, see if these reduce, but they do not. They do not. So guess what? I got all six. I mean, I'm not going to put a bunch of these problems. I'm probably going to only have like two or three, right? Because it's a lot of work. All right, so here's one. This one's kind of easy. I want to do another one. I'll do another one with where it does have a number in the front. Okay, that'll be the next one. I'll put the next video.